to Game of Roses. This is Pace Case. This is Bachelor Clues, and today is Friday, which means a few things. One, Gotta it get means... Down. What's that? Gotta get down on Friday. Oh, I wasn't aware. Mm-hmm. I'll commence getting down as soon as we finish recording this episode, rest assured. You know what? <laughs> I'm going to get down in this episode, because we've got a couple of, of very special things Friday? today. You don't know that? I don't know about it. That classic? I don't know it. Rebecca Black? Oh, Friday, Friday, Friday. Yeah, I do. I remember, Friday, of course. Friday. Well, it's a good thing that you started bringing up Music Pace Case because right now what mm-hmm. I want to do, this is This Week in Bachelor Nation. We're going to have all that news, all those tids, everything that you mm-hmm. could possibly imagine. Plus, we've got a special report that we're going to be doing in State mm-hmm. of the Game about Pace Case and I. State of the Game. <laughs> you don't want to miss that for sure. Um, Pace mm-hmm. Case and I attended a very interesting event last night um at which let's just say tyler cameron was there but let's just say i have a pillow of tyler cameron now you do mine's right next to me too (laughs) (laughs) i was trying to like put it in the background so it's just he's like looking over me we uh we thought maybe it would be a new object of affection for scobby (sighs) not yet did uh, they consummate? Not no. yet. Keep but I posted. think it's going to happen. I'll Bef- give it to Luca. I'll see what he thinks. <laughs> Take a video of that. If that goes down, I have to he see it. He might destroy it. <laughs> That's my only fear. If he starts to destroy, yeah. I'll, I'll interfere, of course. Sure. Uh, before we start before the, that. the main portion of the show, we've got something very special for you. As you know, sometimes I make songs. Uh, sometimes they're about <laughs> The Bachelor. And recently... Some new. Yeah, they're mostly about the bachelor. <laughs> Let's be real; they're mostly about the bachelor. <laughs> but uh, there have been some new tools coming out in the world of artificial intelligence recently, and there are a lot of songs that I've written the lyrics to, and I simply don't have the skill or the vocal ability to create them. Now, don't say that, Clues. You're so good. Oh, thank you. Um, well, with the help of this new AI tool. I have made one of these songs, and I'm going to premiere it for you now. Are you ready, Pace Case, for this? The song is called, I'm Can I Steal? literally you? never ready for these because they're always amazing. Well, here it is. This is a Game of Roses world premiere of Can I Steal You? Here we go. I can see you're talking to another guy right now. But I gotta get a minute of your time somehow And what am I supposed to do from over here? I need to walk right up and whisper in your ear Sounds amazing. It's pretty good. Can I steal you? Just for a minute Cause I want you to know Exactly who I am Can I steal you Just for a second Cause I need to show you I'm more than just a friend Stealing ain't bad if you say it's okay This is a game, girl, we both have to play Stealing ain't wrong if you say it's alright I'm just trying to make it through tonight It's like to be in my shoes But you don't know who you want to (laughs) choose I have a few things that I'd really like to say To help you realize that it's me you want to stay Can I steal you 
just for a minute Cause I want you to know exactly who I am Can I feel <laughs> you just for a second Cause I need to show you I'm more than just a friend Can I steal you? Can I steal you just for a second? I want you to know exactly who I am. Oh my God, I love all the applause. Let's go. So what'd you think of that? It's playing again. <laughs> oh my god, clues! Yeah, that was beautiful. I know that was like a little bit heart wrenching. Yes, that's the power it's of the steel. Beautifully written. Thank you. I love the chorus. Thank you. Which is always my favorite part of a song. Okay. Um, are you open to notes? Of course. I would like it faster. Yeah. I would like an EDM version. Okay, I can try that. Something I can like dance to. Okay, maybe I'll do a whole like EDM co- album in honor of Coachella, yeah, et cetera. Okay, I'm not there. I wish I was. You know, I could do all a- the Bachelor people are there. I know. I could do a whole album of just that song in different styles potentially. But are you at all mm. um, impressed with the quality of it? That this is an AI did all of that. Yeah, it definitely. I would imagine that was. Jed Wyatt. Yeah, I mean, this is maybe even better than Jed Wyatt. Let's be real. Okay. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Jed rocks. Yes, Jed does rock indeed. But thank you for indulging that. I hope everybody out there liked that. I'll probably post this song. I'm thinking about making maybe a little AI inspired music video for it or something like that too. That might wind up on our YouTube channel. But it's very like it's a little it's a little sad. I would say. Yeah. Stealing but is I sad. Think stealing is like fun. It's oh. like, oh. All right. Well, maybe I'll try to do a more fun one. Like we're going to get some. Yeah. No, I mean, I look, I like it. Yeah. You know, it's just, I'm kind of surprised by the tone. Well, that was the tone that it has always been kind of in my head because it is yeah. about this lamentation. Yeah, how of much like, did it, how much did it match what you had in your head? N- the melody, not at all. The original melody that was in my head was this. Can I can I steal you just for a second? Because I, I need like it to. <laughs> yeah, it was like it, definitely different, the melody. But the tone was pretty similar. I felt hmm. like it was, to me, stealing is a sad thing. Because it's like you don't hmm. want to have to do it. Producers are making you do it. It's like if I don't do it, I'm not going to get time and I might be kicked off. And it is this idea of like, mm. we're all playing this game, the player and the bachelorette, I, you know? Yeah. And that's, I guess that's the the kind of sad part for me is just like, let me show you myself because there yeah. are so many people who go on the show who don't really get to show who they are to yeah. any audience. I agree. But uh, that song took me about two hours to make using this tool called Udio, U-D-I-O. It's an okay. open beta right now. Anybody who's Sponsor into music, us. check it out. No, it's fa- it's really good. It's uh, I think it has knocked Suno off the top of the mountain by a, by a large margin. Honestly, the I loved the like the sound you made for our how to mm-hmm. save paradise. That one was with Suno. That was awesome. Mm. And I think this and one's a million one times better. Defeated. Yeah, I I am saying that. Who knows where it'll all shake out in the end? We are in this kind of AI arms race for all the various things that are happening: text to image, text to video. This is text to music, essentially. Um, at any rate, mm. let's move now on. We're gonna do some text to voice now, as we <laughs> <laughs> record our state of the game. It's the state of the game. All right, so our state of the game is how to even describe this. An email it's appeared unreal. in our <laughs> Game of Roses email account that was inviting mm-hmm. Lizzie and I 
to a launch party for Tyler Cameron's new show, um, which again, you can see here, it's called Going Home with Tyler Cameron. And these little pillows, which you can see them on YouTube if you mm -hmm. uh, watch us on YouTube, they gave these, these out pillows as were prizes. going home with Pace Case and Bachelor Clues. Yeah. <laughs> it was a th the first thing I saw. They also had bigger versions of these pillows that uh, oh, yeah. I lament not stealing at this point. Yeah. Well, I'm glad that we won these because yeah. I really wanted one. <laughs> I did too. Uh, this, How did we win them? We won them by swinging a sledgehammer thing at this little kind of like game where you had to hit a thing and it told you how hard you hit yes. it or whatever. They were tote bags. It's like you're constructing the house. I yes. loved it. But let's set the scene, Pace Case. This took place at okay. one hotel in West Hollywood on their rooftop mm -hmm. bar. This is a very nice hotel. Uh, Gorgeous. It was, you know, very well attended and appointed. They had a walk and step. Mm -hmm. Pace Case and I uh, got to take part in that. And our pictures oh, are yeah. in the, the Getty uh, photos. Step uh, and thing. repeat. Yeah. Next to one Colton Underwood who was in attendance. There mm -hmm. were so many. If you look up the, the photos, we are <laughs> yeah. right before him. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but there were so many Bachelor people at this event. Um, there was, of course, Colton Underwood. Tyler Cameron was, of course, there. A bunch of players from season 28. Leia, Daisy, so many. Rachel, Kelsey T, Caitlin, Jess. It? We also saw Becca Tilly, Tammy Lee. I gasped when I saw Daisy. I did too. Kate Gallivan okay. was there. Garen Flowers was there. Arden Mirren. Arden Mirren was Our there. Our friend from Bad Judge. Yeah, she was. Arden was in the original pilot of Bad Judge, which is the show that Lizzie and I met on. And then the uh, studio or the network said she played the best friend character. And the network said, mm, we don't think she should have a best friend character. So Arden's role was entirely edited out of the pilot. Then two weeks into the writer's room, the network said, you know what? The main character needs a best friend. Unbelievable. <laughs> that's, that's the how, circle of life. That's network television. But, um, the but there were two other very important people there. Yes. And uh, I feel like we should say how you saw them. <laughs> yes. We were there for about an hour and a half. And I the music was very loud. It's a lot of people. There's just a lot going on. I don't do well with that kind of shit. So my head is pounding, and I'm like, I have to vacate this place you now, IFI. or I will die here. Yes. <laughs> Self-eliminated. I, I played an IFI self-elimination from the Tyler Cameron party. <laughs> I mean, that's an accurate description. It is. But aren't you glad you did it at a certain precise now, timing? Exactly. This is... This is not even my scream from the pit, but it is um, oh, it is that, dark pit that's energy. That's crazy. It is dark okay. pit energy. So I meander through the throng of people. It's the elbow throng. to elbow, um, you know, and you're kind of just like pushing past people <laughs> oh, like, oh, let me out of here. I got to get out of here. You can't breathe. It was hot it as was hell. It was a very well-planned event. Yeah. It was probably, what, 90 degrees in there? But too hot. Too hot. Yes. Um, so I'm elbowing my way to the elevator, just thinking of the, the sweet relief of getting to like leave this place. And I'm standing by the elevator and the elevator's doors open. And I look inside to see who's coming out. And two eyes lock onto mine for a brief second. They belong to the great one, Nick Vial. We're eye to eye. And we just wow. walk past each other. Without a word. And Natalie Joy was there too. She also How was the out. gaze play of the of your great one? It was pretty good. Powerful. Pretty good, yeah. Um, I saw them after you left and I was really upset because I was like, yeah. he's, Chad is going to be so mad. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, I assumed there's no way he wouldn't be there because they were on um, Special Forces World stuff as test together, co-champions. And uh, yeah, now that I've seen the things I've seen, I'm silly to have ever thought that they wouldn't have been. But mm -hmm. well, yeah, the I'm things happy that you've seen. for you. Thank you. I'm happy for you that you got a glimpse of greatness. I did get a glimpse um, and I relished it, but also I had to get out of there. 
which I did. But it was a great <laughs> event, and I am curious to watch the show. I know Hannah Brown's going to be on the show, and I think some other people from Bachelor Nation. It premieres on the mm. 18th, I believe, of April. But the Great One show premieres. Oh, we're recording this on Thursday. It premieres tonight on the CW. Oh it's called God. The Matchmaker with Patty Stanger. I'm going to be covering that in Clues Corner. And I'm sure I'll say we that about 10 more Zoom times. on the Zoom, and Clues was like, are you going to watch the show? And I was like, <laughs> what are we talking about? I was like, I don't, what do you mean? Like, yeah. I, I don't know. I don't know what, I thought maybe you meant the Tyler thing. And you're like, the great one. He's on Patty Stanger. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I, for me, it's mandatory. Obviously, catch, I'm look, so excited about it. Look, I got to finish the Vanderpump season one finale that I'm going to catch up mm. on Vanderpump. And now I've just been told that I have to watch The Valley. So mm. going to be watching that as well. Yeah. So a lot of palapas t- in the pipeline, let's say. I agree. But I will say this. I agree. Our inclusion at this event, our invitation to this event, mm. we still don't know how that happened. It's mysterious. Yes. It is mysterious to us. We got an anonymous letter. But I think that's the power of 2020 gore. Things are just happening Mm. now. I was also informed, by the way, it's Year of the Dragon. Chinese Zodiac. Year of the Dragon comes back in June. I'm Year of the Dragon. Ah. I was born in it. Thank you. Um, I don't know if that has anything to do with anything. But I'm simply saying... Would you say you identify with everyone born the year you were born? Yes, 100%. Hmm. Um, (laughs) I'm simply saying (laughs) this was a a pleasure to attend this event. It was so well put together. And it really just makes you... It was so fun. We got to take pictures in these like construction vests and had our little hammers and stuff. I loved it. Thank you, Tyler, for inviting us, I presume. Yeah, or whoever did. And we'll mm-hmm. keep looking at our emails. That much I can guarantee if anybody yeah, else keep... wants to invite us to any other things. Yes. <laughs> it was it was wonderful. I, there were just so many people there. Yeah. I of course, of course, he's the male great one, but I mean Instagram. Yeah. Wise. And you'll all these oh. pictures we're talking about of ourselves will be on our Instagrams and everywhere else. And also, we shouldn't fail to mention. Someone attended this event with us, the Phantom Member of Gore. Yes. Erica. Erica Amundsen. She was there My in bestie. attendance. Um, She's technically our third member yeah. who watched who watched with us in the beginning yeah. while we were starting to spin out, and she just took notes, and she became a doctor. Yeah, and she got out. Have become the pit. <laughs> she got out of the got pit out. to become a doctor, and we're doing what we're doing now. Clutching Tyler I Cameron her, pillows. Or we interviewed her at some point mm-hmm. about um, when we went to the Caitlin Bristow group date. Oh, God, so I remember that. on the show. That's on our Patreon, too. But, yeah, it was great. Great for the trio to be back together for, I mean, I've only seen your great one twice in my life. Yeah. And it was with you. It was just such a, a stellar grouping of... Huge L.A. icon bachelor. I mean, everybody who was there, I think, is an L.A. icon. Um, all mm-hmm. I'm not sure, actually, about all the players from season 28. Maybe some of them were just in town, happened to be in town, or maybe were right. in town for this. But obviously, Vial, Joy, these are L.A. icons. Colton Underwood, L.A. icon. Tyler Cameron, I don't think, Becca is. Tilly? He lives in Florida. Becca Tilly oh, might Tammy be. Tammy lives here. Yeah, Tammy is here. Um, at any rate. It was a fantastic event. Thank you to whoever invited us. We will never know, probably. Mm-hmm. But yeah, look Dark at Lord Palmer. <laughs> look for the pictures of this event <laughs> on our social media and what have you. And now, Pace Case, shall we move on to today's games? We would give out the ratings, but we're not in season. Skip crown gains. <laughs> gains you, wait, you know what I will be covering in this? Speaking of gains, I'm going to be covering uh, the ratings of Matchmaker. Stanger? Yeah. It's on the CW. Okay. You don't I, have to do this. Oh, yes, I do. 
Okay. Yes, I do. I feel like I sometimes have to say it just in case. I'm predicting some point (laughs) zero ones. Well, do you have a Nielsen box? (laughs) No, I don't. Oh. Oh, you're saying I can't help? (laughs) Yeah. If just one more person with a Nielsen box watches, it might go uh... up. (laughs) You have some work to do. What if they cancel it? I mean, that ain't on me. Hmm. Well... Gays extraordinaire Joey Grazia Day gained 12K this week, two weeks post-show for a total of 815,000 Instagram followers, and he gained 9.9K for a total of 246.4K followers on TikTok. So it's starting to trickle down. They're still getting these gains, though, just basically from um, extra coverage and Us Weekly and, and whatever as they're kind of doing their tour, mm-hmm. and oh, look, they're out in the world now. And the TikToks. And all the TikToks. Kelsey and Joey are doing some great yeah. content we'll get to. Now for the top five Instagram gains this week. It doesn't matter that ring winner Kelsey Anderson wasn't on TV for two weeks. The fourth audience has spoken with their thumbs by adding 17,000 new followers, bringing her to a total of 648K. Damn. Daisy Kent continues to ride the gain train with another 12k pairs of eyeballs signing on to follow her rise to power within the nation bringing her overall total to 845k our once would-be crown maria gorgas gained 4k new followers bringing her to 611k and the first person to accept the crown offer for next season jen tran might be shooting her season 21 of The Bachelorette. Currently, better fans are sitting on their couches, pressing those follow buttons, giving our first Asian crown 2K new off-season followers, bringing her total to 184K total. And in fifth place is third place finisher and wet thumb eyelash wish player Rachel Nance, (laughs) who pulled in 1K new followers in the second week of the off-season, allowing for a total of 103K. Oh, nice. Hopefully more after this, these Tyler Cameron photos come out. Yeah, possibly. And the top five Instagram chart as of today, April 11th, we are recording this, is first place Daisy Kent came out on top with 845,000 followers. Kelsey Anderson in second with 648K. Friend of Vin Diesel Maria Gorgas dropped to third with 611,000 total. Our next crown, Jen Tran, has 184K. And Rachel Nance is in fifth with 103,000. Moving on now to the top five TikTok chart. Daisy Kent is on top with 492,000 TikTok followers. Kelsey Anderson's in second with 396.1K. Maria Gorgas is in third with 365.1K. Night one player, Kira Brush, staying strong in fourth, 120.3K. And Jen Tran is knocking on the door of 100K in fifth place with 99.2K. She's going to get there, obviously. Can't wait to see that uh, threshold Mm -hmm. cross. I'm really kind of shocked, honestly, that there's any of these gains are still happening two weeks after the the season's over. Mm -hmm. I mean, Kelsey Anderson put on 17,000. This week? I think it's the TikToks. Yeah. And they're showing up in like the, the Hulu party. We'll get to it. Mm-hmm. I Stop know. Stop trying to talk about the Hulu party clues. <laughs> <laughs> well, and now let's check out all of those tids from this week. This is Bachelor Nation News. Bachelor Nation News. First up in Bachelor Nation news, season 20 Bachelorette Charity Lawson has gone public with new information about her recent breast enhancement surgery. Lawson chose TikTok as her platform of record this week in a candid video revealing her reasons for making the decision after a prior revelation that she was, quote, in recovery, but never mentioning what that recovery was for. In the TikTok video, Lawson said, I wanted to clear the air and talk about what I was in recovery for. There has been a lot of speculation and a lot of you have reached out to me, sending me really encouraging, uplifting messages, not even knowing what's going on, which I truly appreciate. 
chose your sincerity. No one knew, and I'm here to talk about it. Before I dive into it, I want to preface this entire conversation and video saying that I want to be the person who's being transparent and normalizing these experiences that so many of us go through, but I feel like we can't talk out of fear of judgment. I'm the first to say that I was very fearful of that. It's 2024, and if you ain't living your life for you at this point, I don't know what else to tell you. With that being said, I was in recovery because I got my girlies done. I'll show them off a little bit. They are one week post-op, as you can see. Even if I turn to the side, it's still in proportion with my frame. I'm very petite and tiny, and I knew that going in. So I didn't want it to be like, oh my gosh, this girl got her titties done. I want it to look very natural, and I wanted it really just for me. Lawson stated that breast augmentation was something she'd wanted to do for herself for a long time, and she's glad she did it. She also thanked her doctor, Dr. Daniel Barrett, in Beverly Hills, and shared that she was already up and moving around by day two. Congrats to Charity for living for herself this year, and hopefully for many years to come. Girlies! Up next, speaking of girlies, Bachelor Nation News, New York City's Bridal Fashion Week played host to a slate of Bachelor Nation All-Stars. Chelsea Vaughn, Serena Pitt, Abigail Herringer, and Charity Lawson joined hundreds of brides and brides-to-be from all over the world in New York to check out new looks from wedding dress designers, putting on runway shows featuring their latest collections. Gore girl Chelsea Vaughn, bride-to-be Abigail Herringer, and newlywed Serena Pitt posted several pics together on Instagram from the WYN beauty event, which was hosted by Serena Williams. And Herringer even tried on some wedding dresses for her upcoming matrimonial ceremony. Former bachelorette and fellow bride-to-be Charity Lawson also attended Bridal Fashion Week, where she told the New York Times that she's looking for gowns for her 2025 wedding and hopes to have a dress picked out by July for her wedding in California next fall, which will be followed by a traditional Nigerian celebration in Lagos, Nigeria, to honor Doton's heritage. Congrats to all of the brides, brides-to-be, and bride-adjacent players who attended Bridal Fashion Week. I love to be bride adjacent. <laughs> <laughs> Always a bride adjacent, never a bride. That's right. Speaking of Abigail Herringer at Bridal Fashion Week, the season 25 Fimp Rose recipient and BIP forced breaker upper, young Noah Herb, have officially set a wedding date. Although we don't know the exact date for the Herbinger wedding, Herringer union. So. <laughs> I call them. We Herbinger. don't know what the exact date for the Harbinger. Herbinger. That's the. That's how I'm. I'm merging their names into Herbinger. Oh my gosh! I thought this was a typo. <laughs> Although we don't know what the exact date for the Herbinger union is just yet. Both members of this all-star couple took. To, I'm glad you're having so much fun. Took to Instagram this week to share engagement photos with a caption that read. Mood because we finally have a date. The countdown officially begins. I'm still Let's go. I'm loopy still from last night. Uh, the post scored congratulatory <laughs> comments from Chelsea Vaughn. You're playing an IFI on this goddamn podcast. <laughs> I'll also? do it. I'll do it every time if I have to. The post scored congratulatory <laughs> comments from Chelsea Vaughn, Becca Kufra, Blake Boyd, Serene Russell, many more. Congrats to Herbinger on taking this next incredible step, improving alongside Alana Milne and Chris Conran that the couples who were forced by producers to break up on the stinging sands of old paradise are among the strongest in the nation. That is that is an interesting statistic. Yeah. I mean, that's Kufrin and uh, Big Body as well. Yeah. Next up in Bachelor Nation news, <laughs> it's Herbinger. <laughs> <laughs> As Herbinger <laughs> continues their cohabitation on the road to matrimony, <laughs> another couple within the nation has revealed that they are still living apart. <laughs> Although it's been three months since their televised wedding, golden god Gary Turner and his ring winner, Teresa Nist, still decided to sleep under the same roof. A source has reportedly leaked information to Life and Style claiming that Gary is still living at the lake house in Indiana, while Teresa continues to live in New Jersey, where she works as a compliance officer. Is this a sign of a separation to come? Or is it merely no. two people taking How their time you. to make a big life decision? Time will tell. Well, look, there is... They're bi-coastal. I saw something online today that said Reality Steve is going to break some big 
news story that's like not good in Bachelor Nation, and people are theorizing oh, no. it might be a golden dissolution. Better not be about Dark Lord Palmer. <laughs> that's what you are concerned about? No, I don't. We can't have a... No, they have to... I know. But I can... Yeah. They they haven't found a place to live together for three months. That doesn't mm. seem good to me. I don't know. We'll, time will tell, but that's not good. I refuse to believe it. Right. They're they're the ones they can't live without. How are they going to live without each other? Clues? Yeah. I think it's just yeah they're bicoastal. We'll see. Um, and to round out Bachelor Nation news, just one more friendly reminder that Matchmaker premieres tonight as we record this, but you'll be listening to it Friday, which means you can watch the premiere episode with me in Clues Corner right now at patreon.com slash Game of Roses. I feel like you're probably oh more excited about The Matchmaker than anyone who worked on that show. Or anyone. Yeah, maybe. I mean, I, I kind of just did the quick, uh, ran the numbers in my head, and I think you're right. Mm -hmm. All I can say is, to see the great one returning to television in a capacity such as this, where I believe he's one of the main characters of this show. I'm looking so forward to him <laughs> giving condescending uh, advice to all these different guys who are trying to date. I can't wait. I am very interested in the wardrobe. Yep, I'm interested in the wardrobe. I want to see him sour grapesing. I want to see him when I was the bacheloring. I think we're going to get it all. Mm -hmm. Well, when I was a bachelor, I ate beignets. So maybe this could be your soulmate. Yeah. I hope he trains these guys on how to eat beignets. <laughs> you think that'll be on the show? I told you about the dog named Beignet, right? No. Whose dog is named Beignet? Oh, that should be a scream. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm always hopping around at the dog parks, but at one of them, there's always a dog named Beignet. <laughs> mm. And I always think of The Bachelor. Yeah, they probably named that dog after the Beignet that mm -hmm. Nick Vial ate. Probably. Statistically, I think that's got to be true. It's most likely, yeah. Anyway, uh, let's move on to that portion of our program where we discuss all the goings-ons on your phones, on your tablets, in the astral plane, mm. this is the personal show play of the week. Ring winner Kelsey Anderson made a three slide Instagram post with professional photos of her by herself and then one with Joey. The caption reads Hulu X Disney plus celebration champagne popping emoji. Decided to give the Gucci slides a rest. Hashtag IYKYK. End caption. 129.4K likes, 404 comments, including Grazi writing hashtag Kelsey is hot. Absolutely incredible. This Hulu X Disney Plus thing is like, that's that's the big time. Right? They are yeah. promoting Bachelor as like, this is one of our flagship things. We're going to put you with freaking Grey's Anatomy, et cetera. Mm -hmm. And then you look at like, I know that they have licensing deals and it's all kind of like mired in various things, but Hulu and Disney Plus, it's like, is Bachelor coming to Disney Plus? Airing at the I same so. time. Do you remember when they moved Dancing with the Stars I to it? I hope so. Yeah. And then they brought it back. I think just why not have it concurrently airing there? You know what I mean? Like, yeah. what's the harm? I think the harm is sure ratings <laughs> because people, the network still mm. needs you to watch it Monday night at this time to get their ratings. Mm. And so if it's airing yeah, anywhere else simultaneously, it siphons people off of that number. But they need to just start moving that direction. Of course. Read the tea leaves. Absolutely. But I think Read they. Read all the Luna music makers they're making numa what, what? Is it? what are you talking about <laughs> i don't even know what's going on here the music ai thing Speaking that you used gibberish. to make that oh. song the one that i used for that song was called udio udio it's like audio oh. without the a 
I wasn't close. The other one is Suno, S-U-N-O. At any rate, let's move on, shall we? Hashtag Jelsey yes. is hot. Also posted with Ellen Pompeo of the Grey's Anatomy at this party. Uh, as well as a... Kelsey is hot. Jelsey is hot. I see. Uh, they posted with Ellen Pompeo as well as a TikTok of themselves in full pink sweatsuits with pink glasses lip syncing to the song Nobody Knows Me Like You Do. As they make breakfast, Joey holds a brown dog creature to the mirror existentially. <laughs> Kelsey <laughs> has relatable wet hair. It cracks an egg into a pan with one hand while singing. The TikTok got 2.2 million views and 317K likes. That's a number. They got more likes than I I believe the matchmaker will have viewers. Oh, roasted. Thank you. Grazi's sister Carly made an incredible TikTok this week under the Chiron POV. Your little brother is The Bachelor and the last six months of your life feel like a dream with a montage of videos of the pair going to cool events. This post had it all. The pair at NFL games as Joey is handing out roses and them going on talk shows, them meeting celebs and eating fun food. 783K views for Damn. the sister of the lead. 91K likes. It is very for TRR, but it also highlights the uh, Lux press life after the show for mm-hmm. the lead and his plus one choices. But they're doing it right here too. Like all of these events that they're going to are because of ABC putting this together, like making sure they're on these lists and stuff. You didn't really mm-hmm. see this with like, certainly not with Clayton Eckerd, really not with Zach and Katie even. What do you mean? They did, I'm sure they did some stuff. Some, but not like this. This is like a true celebration of them in a way that we mm-hmm. haven't seen in a while. Uh, all these were strong plays. However, there can be only one winner. Our parasocial play of the week goes to a joint play between enemy of shirts Tyler Cameron and enemy of fast judgments Nick Vial. <laughs> Vial <laughs> Fi- <laughs> Files podcast promos continue to stun. This one showed us clothes strewn on the floor like a post-consummation fantasy suite date with a sexy soundtrack, finally revealing the nude legs of Tyler Cameron with a black box and then showing Tyler uh, what appears to be a full voluntary nudity play on the couch for the podcast recording, complete with black box over his crotch in order to promote Cameron's new show. Nick appreciates the hustle, as do we, and we're happy to see these two Special Forces winners continue to collab to boost both their clout. I watched this whole they YouTube got more video. more Special Forces at work here. I watched it all uh, for digging deeper. There is a very interesting clip. That came out. Yeah. I watched it this morning on oh, wow. three times speed. I finally oh my downloaded God. my speed controller. So uh, Tyler Cameron does a lot of stuff in this. I don't know if he's really naked. I can't imagine he is. They're literally commenting about his penis um, yeah. for the, the first like five minutes of it. He's doing things where he, he's just kind of sitting casually there with his legs crossed. Then he'll uncross his legs and like put them up in the air so that there's a full exposed shot toward the camera. I can't Whoa. imagine he was really actually naked. No, but I'm. I love this. He's just like fully leaning into the brand and yeah. going all out. He did the OnlyFans thing for April Fools, and this is just a beautiful escalation of that. I love to see it. I agree, and uh, we also have a couple of creatures to talk about here. Congrats, by the way, to Tyler and the great one on this parasocial play of the week. But now we move on. We did see a brown dog in Kelsey and Joey's pink sweatsuit video that Joey's holding. Very cute creature. Unfortunately, not cute enough. There were a lot of cute creatures this week, but there was one that stood out from the crowd. It seems that Nashville slider royalty Christina Mandrell and Braden Bowers welcomed a new addition to their family. This week, the parasocial creature of the week goes to a very cute pup named Rue. Mandrell introed Rue to the nation via a series of Instagram stories featuring Rue napping on the couch next to Mandrell and in more than a few slides, literally sleeping on Braden Bowers' face. Congrats to Rue, Mandrell, and Bowers on this exceptional creature play. Love that. Did you see these stories? These dangling creatures now. I mean, there's one shot where Braden Bowers is literally passed out, and this dog is just like on his head while he's asleep. Highly recommend it. Mm. Watch out, Pino and Ramen. I know. Rue is coming for that crown. Mm -hmm. 
But that wraps up all of our parasocial plays, creature, human, whatever you want to call it. And now we got to move on to that portion of our program where we dive deep into the pit and issue forth our screams about how our fascination with The Bachelor and indeed all reality TV at this point is taking over our lives or has fully taken over our lives. This mm -hmm. is... Where do I end and The Bachelor begins? Yes. I don't know. Uh, my scream is obviously our state of the game. The Tyler Cameron. Uh, oh, now I'm using Tyler as my back pillow. I'm going on the Tyler Cameron party. Uh, this is my scream. I now have. This is the only person that I have a pillow of. So mm. that's very special. And something Same. happened at the party. Which is, I thought, you and Erica and maybe a few Bachelor people would be the only people I recognized at this party. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and there were many reality and TikTok stars there. But there were also two other people who were my co-workers from back in the day when I worked at a talent agency. And one of them is now... He was part of the event planning for this. And the other guy is apparently Tyler Cameron's manager. Yeah. That was shocking. That's the dark energy roads, of the pit. All roads lead to Bachelor and back to uh, <laughs> the talent agency. Yeah. None of them. Yeah. Everyone left. Yeah. Um, I, I found that pretty them. astounding, it's too. That yeah. one of your coworkers is literally Tyler Cameron's manager now. And it's like the world seems yeah. very small when you realize the pit holds the entire world in it. And I had brought Erica, who's not entertainment related, but had worked at that agency before she became a doctor. So. And I believe is a very strong seminal member of the pit. Even though she never has uh, done the podcasting and she went on to become a doctor, I get it. Even though all of that happened, I consider save her... kids or whatever. Yeah, whatever she's doing to help <laughs> save lives. Um, Look, we make lives better too, okay? Sure, we're saving lives one scream uh -huh. at a time. I do believe that she was an integral part of the formation of the pit. Yeah. I think she filmed a lot of our um, demonic rituals at yep, first. Yeah, she did. And she was always there, mostly studying mm -hmm. at the end, but uh, she was watching. And she was there. Um, her husband is the one who introduced us to the Great One in the first place. God, that's true. The dark energies are everywhere. They're um, everywhere. And I can tell you where they were on Tuesday night. Okay. Because my scream, nice thank you. My scream involves um, every once in a while, if my Instagram suggestions start repeating, I'm like, fuck it, I'll buy it. So I bought a new pair of shoes what? this week from Instagram, which I love. If an ad repeats enough times, you'll just buy it? Yeah, because I'm like, I'll trust the algorithm. And it's never steered me wrong. Oh my God. So. What? What do you mean it's never steered you wrong? How's that possible? Everything I've ever bought that Instagram has told me to buy, I have liked. Wow. So, like I said, yeah. I bought a pair of these shoes, and I'm walking around in these shoes now, and that's fun. What kind? Uh, what are they called, even? Sneakers? Yeah. Here. They're called um, Flex. Flux. Sorry. Oh, whoa. It looks like a sock. Yeah, it's great. Um, Interesting. They have like a little, uh, I don't know how to call it, like the thing inside the insole is like has a texture on it. So it like massages your foot while you walk, supposedly. Whatever. Mm -hmm. I like them. That's not even what I'm talking about. Another thing <laughs> that Instagram has been serving up to me is this place called Mayo Detox. There are multiple of them in Los Angeles. There's one in West Hollywood, like five minutes from me. And it essentially is a, a physical therapy kind of place but they specialize in like really digging in deep into your muscles and stuff and like breaking okay. up all of your uh, fascia, right? And I have 
from it's years of uh, it's just like tissue that can kind of build up and it's like your whole body is connected with this stuff so like mm -hmm. you can have if you have like a sore back you can feel it in your foot sometimes weird shit like that right so i've had a bad right side of my kind of like shoulder upper back for a long time i think due mm -hmm. to excessive repetitive use when i played baseball for many years and now it's just like mm -hmm. Oh, it didn't like that. And now it's just going to seize up and be that. terrible. Me and who? TC. He played baseball. He's an athlete. You're both athletes. He played football, though. You don't throw with the same hand? He wasn't a quarterback, A. And, and no, you throw <laughs> a lot more in baseball than you ever would in football. So. Okay. Mr. Sportsman. So I have had these pains in my shoulder and shit for a long time, and I always go get deep tissue massages, and that doesn't help, and I do all kinds of stuff to try and help. It doesn't help. So I'm like, uh, okay. screw it. I'm going to go fine. test this out. I go to this place. I sign up. I go in, and I'm on this table, and this guy is like wrenching on my back and stuff, and he's like, so what do you mm -hmm. do? And I'm like, do you uh -oh. watch The Bachelor? I proceed to do an hour-long dragging into the pit of a man who is ripping the shit out of all the muscles in my back uh, to the most painful degree that I've ever had any kind of a massage or anything like this. And it did help. It did work. So once again, the Instagram really? algorithm, correct. Yeah. I, I booked some more sessions and stuff. I'm going to go back in the next week it or two. It fixed your shoulder? Didn't fix it, but it made it feel a lot better. Yeah. Um, hmm. So hopefully with, with repeated sessions or whatever, it'll, it'll be fully better. But... I've never had an experience of trying to drag somebody in the pit while I was not only in extreme physical pain, but the person I'm trying to drag in is the cause of the physical pain. And it worked. He said he'd listen to our show. So if you're listening, thank you. Thank you for listening to my shoulder. I thought you were going to say you tried to recruit him. Uh, no, I did not do that. Hmm. My apologies. All right. Well, I'm happy to hear about your good fascia. Thank you. Um. <laughs> I think it's good to, you know, it's kind of like you're dissociating while the pain is going on. You're like, oh, yeah. if I could just talk about the pit, it's like I'm doing something else. You know it's what? Like <laughs> I think one of my other screens was this too. I did this to a nurse while I was getting a colonoscopy. Uh, <laughs> it really is my, my safe space, the pit. At any rate, let's now move on to hearing a scream from someone else in the pit as you might know, if you're on our Patreon at patreon.com slash Game of Roses, you get access to our Discord. In that Discord, there's a channel where you can upload a one-minute or shorter scream of your very own. We play the best ones here. Let's take a listen to this one. Hello, my beloved pit. This week, I got to experience something truly miraculous. And yeah, I also saw the total solar eclipse, but that's not my scream. Because here's the thing. I love Cleveland. I love Cleveland. When I decided where to go to watch the eclipse, of course I went to Cleveland. <laughs> so there I was on Monday, standing on the rooftop deck on the 15th floor of the iconic Terminal Tower downtown, surrounded by a ton of other people there to witness one of the last beautiful things that we could see from our dying planet. And I was chatting with somebody who told me that her husband worked in Cleveland tourism. And on a lark, I said, hey, does he know anything about a date that happened in Cleveland maybe five years ago or so for the TV show The Bachelor? And when she said, oh yeah, that was him, I screamed. I screamed out loud. Everybody looked at me. Of course, I dragged her immediately. And I also made sure to tell her husband, to tell all of his co-workers, that I Love Cleveland is now an iconic play in our beloved game. outstanding oh my palmer <laughs> what i that know was so funny yeah i can't believe this neither can i, I and it took like, place oh, during the like eclipse follow up. like that it, it doesn't get funny. more pit energy than that you know what i mean than ignoring the eclipse yeah <laughs> or that it's even just happening during an eclipse is very interesting yeah. to me as Ooh. well Yes, that is witchy. Yeah, there's some darkness there. Um, this is amazing. I, I kind of want to follow up because I'm like, I want to know how much money did Cleveland pay Bachelor? 
I don't know. Or, did, or is it just that they all go there for free? I'm I'm very curious. Yeah, um, me too. Thank you for this amazing scream. Absolutely incredible. And congrats on seeing the eclipse. Yeah, and congrats on dragging someone into the pit who worked on iconic season 24 of The Bachelor during a solar eclipse. That's a once-in-a-lifetime event. We thank you for sharing it with us as your scream. You know, technically I saw it, but it was too bright. <laughs> oh, right. You looked into the sun. I looked. Jesus. That's a scream <laughs> in and of itself. I have no idea how that relates <laughs> to The Bachelor, but somehow it must. Look, I laugh at those photos of uh, 45 looking. Me but too. <laughs> Everybody laughs at that. It's pretty funny. It is funny. Uh, but we thank you once again for submitting your screams. And anybody else out there, again, you just go to patreon.com slash gameroses. Get in that Discord and fire off your scream into the Screams from the Pit channel. Uh, we thank everyone for joining us today. And like I said earlier, patreon.com also has me down. watching the first oh. episode of <laughs> The Matchmaker. And yes, time to get down also. <laughs> also. Um <laughs> But uh, Pace Case, before we go, as always, what I'm is so that dwab you, at? For your show. It has been 8,053 <laughs> days without an Asian bachelor. Praise be Dark Lord Palmer. <laughs>